Welcome to the 14th episode of Two Cents Tuesday. This week, I want to chat about a visit by the members of the royal family to St. Lucia and other Caribbean countries as part of the celebrations of the Queen's Platinum Jubilee, the 70th anniversary of the ascension of Elizabeth Alexandra Mary to the throne as Queen Elizabeth II, Queen of the United Kingdom, Canada, Australia, New Zealand, South Africa, Pakistan, and Ceylon, which is now known as Sri Lanka, and head of the Commonwealth. Last month, Prince William and his wife, Duchess Kate, visited Belize, Jamaica, and the Bahamas. Currently, the Queen's youngest son, Prince Edward, is visiting St. Lucia, Antigua and Barbuda, Grenada, and St. Vincent and the Grenadines. The purpose of these royal visits during this platinum jubilee year is, quote, to remind the remaining realms of the Queen's devotion to duty and the stability of continued ties to the British crown, unquote. And also to present the modern face of the British monarchy. Additionally, the royal family is hoping that their visits to the Caribbean will dampen what appears to be a rising mood that other Caribbean countries should follow the lead of Barbados and break ties with the monarchy and become republics. Unfortunately for the royal family, but not unpredictably, these visits have not gone entirely as they had hoped. There were protests in Belize and Jamaica. In Jamaica, Prime Minister Holness informed the royal couple that Jamaica would be taking steps to become a republic. And in the Bahamas, a government committee urged the royals to issue a full and formal apology for their crimes against humanity. Both the royal family and the British Foreign Office that planned these trips appear to be oblivious to the prevailing sentiment in the Caribbean. How could they not have expected the discomfort of a region that has been at the forefront of calls for reparations to the descendants of the victims of slavery with visits by members of the royal family for what are, in effect, nothing more than glorified photo opportunities? How could they not have predicted the offense that would be felt by countries whose people migrated to the United Kingdom in the post-World War II period to fill labor shortages in England? only for their children to be later classified as illegal immigrants and threatened with deportation by the UK government in what would become known as the Winrush scandal, with a visit from the royal family that focused only on pomp and ceremony? How could they not have anticipated that in the immediate aftermath of the controversy surrounding Prince Andrew and Jeffrey Epstein, that the visiting members of the royal family would serve as a reminder to many hardworking citizens of the Caribbean, particularly during this difficult period that they're experiencing, of the privilege and elitism that the monarchy represents? How did they not realize the insensitivity of asking countries whose people and economies had been battered and bruised for almost two years by the effects of the COVID-19 pandemic to incur significant additional unplanned expenses to host these royal visits? This Platinum Jubilee tour was a missed opportunity for the British royal family to redefine its role and relevance in the Caribbean. It was a chance for the visiting members of the royal family to engage in open and honest conversations with Caribbean countries and their governments about the issues that matter to Caribbean people and to demonstrate that Queen Elizabeth II and the monarchy are sensitive and sympathetic to our concerns. It was an opportunity to apologize, if nothing else, for past mistakes and transgressions, and to demonstrate empathy on current challenges. Instead, it was treated and executed like every other royal visit in our past dating back to our pre-independence colonial years when we all lined up to sing God save our gracious queen. I know that the royal family does not make executive decisions 
on behalf of the United Kingdom government. That is the preserve of Boris Johnson and his conservative majority government. However, the Queen and the royal family retain an important voice, both in the air of the Prime Minister of England and within the Commonwealth over which she presides. That voice can be used to catalyze and influence discussions on the issues that speak to the economic survival and sustainability of Caribbean countries. Issues like reparations, expansion of tertiary education opportunities for young people in the Caribbean, removal of Caribbean countries from arbitrary European Union blacklists, finance flows to the Caribbean and other countries in the global south, and climate justice to name but a few. Instead, what we have seen from this platinum jubilee talk are pictures of a military parade in Jamaica with the royals dressed in white in an open top Land Rover in optics that reek of our colonial past, children being greeted in Trenchtown through wire fences, and most recently, a royal couple presenting a mystified prime minister with a photo of themselves. Frankly, in this 21st century, these royal visits are anachronistic and absurd. The British monarchy has never been known for its ability to sense and react to the mood of the people. But even with that history, the current level of tone deafness displayed on these trips is astonishing. Queen Elizabeth II has had a long tenure as Queen of England and the Commonwealth, as evidenced by her 70 years on the throne. However, despite the Queen's good health and spirits, it is fair to assume that the royal family has devoted some time working out the logistics of the eventual transition to a new monarch. The new King of England should not expect to play the same role that his predecessor played in the English-speaking Caribbean. If the royal family is to retain any relevance in the Caribbean, it must understand that the Caribbean is no longer a destination for the pomp and ceremony of royal visits, punctuated with photo ops with smiling, flag-waving children. Caribbean countries are seeking to create a viable, sustainable future for themselves after shaking off the effects of a system that first enslaved them, then colonized them, all the while exploiting their land and labor to develop European countries. The same countries that now put them on blacklists every time they try to create new spaces in the global financial system. And the same countries whose greed and out of control production and consumption have created the climate crisis that presently victimizes Caribbean people and their livelihoods. If the royal family cannot recalibrate its interaction with Caribbean countries in a way that helps these countries to achieve true and meaningful independence and viability within the global community of nations, then it is of little value to the Caribbean. Thank you for viewing another Two Cents Tuesday. Have a safe and productive week. Goodbye.